If you do a quick search on the web, I think it is pretty clear to see what are the technical skills required to be a successful data analyst or a data scientist. You might see that pretty much everyone is telling you to master skills like Python, SQL, Excel, Tableau, and maybe a few more. However, apart from the technical skills, there are some soft skills and habits that can really bring you a step ahead of other data analysts. The problem is that these are things that not many people on the web talk about and that often are figured out only when one is actually working in the field. So guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Lore, I'm a data analyst working at Amazon. And in today's video, I want to uncover the key habits that not many people talk about, but are so important in the day-to-day -day of a data professional. I will also give real practical examples on how I try to implement these habits myself in my daily work, so that you can also have a clear understanding on how you might apply these concepts in your work too. And so without further ado, let's get into the so what of this video. Habits number one is consistently documenting your work. Often as a data analyst, you will need to work on repetitive tasks. And yes, those are not the most fun part of being a data analyst, but hey, let me tell you, you will need to take care of that too. One example might be that maybe you are a owner of a dashboard showing the historical performance of your company, and so you're also maintaining the data source of the dashboard, which let's say is a massive Excel file. Now, let's say that the finance team in your company sends you an Excel file every month with some updated performance data, again in an Excel format because they're not organized with database or more advanced systems. And so maybe in your role, you will need to take that file and add that new data to the file that you have with all the historical data. Now, because this is a repetitive task, what is really useful is to document step by step what you're doing as soon as you receive the file from finance. Because, you know, maybe before adding that data to your file, you have to remove some unnecessary data from the new file. Uh, maybe you need to check that data from finance is correct and things like that. If you develop a habit of documenting your work in a clear and concise manner, maybe with a step-by-step -step guide, what you will do is just getting back to the same file and repeating the process. And also, in case someone else will need to do the same task in the future, maybe because you are on holiday, your document will make it super easy for others to understand and redo your work. It seems a simple thing, but a lot of data analysts will just try to remember what they did the month before, and this will take a lot of time, especially if there are a lot of nuances and complexities in those repetitive tasks. And here, one tool that I would recommend is, for example, using Notion to create the step-by-step -step document, while you can also include the code that you might need to run every month, for example, for that specific repetitive task. The second habit is staying up to date. The field of data analysis is constantly evolving and successful data analysts develop a habit of staying up to date with the latest tools, techniques and trends. This includes reading industry publications, attending webinars and participating in online forums or simply following the right people on the social media. One resource that I find super useful is LinkedIn because there are many professionals and creators in the platform that bring in content and in my perspective is much more job oriented compared to platforms like TikTok or Instagram. And I will leave here in the screen some of my favorite professionals that I follow to always stay up to date. And again, let me give you a practical example here. Since I use Tableau pretty much on a daily basis, and given that Tableau constantly releases new features, thanks to him, lately I discovered this new feature called Dynamic Zone Visibility that allows to uh, tailor experiences for your end users so they only see the dashboard elements relevant to them. And the best thing is that I can now actually show this new feature myself to my manager. And obviously this is a great way to impress your team and improve our products and dashboards. Next habit is prioritizing data privacy and protection. A successful data analyst has to develop a habit of considering the ethical implications of their analysis and prioritizing the protection of individuals' privacy and data. A lot of time you will need to create analysis or report that is intended for a broad audience, but at the same time has to have some security restrictions in place so that only certain people can see certain data. And let me clarify again with a personal example. I have now a dashboard that is showing data for all European countries and so all the European teams have access to it. However, I need to make sure that the French team, for example, when opening the dashboard, we only see data related to France and not of other countries. Only the very senior people in my company can see the data of all the countries. As a data analyst, I need to know the methods that are used to show the right data to the right people. And so, for example, one method is what is called the raw level security, which is something that I learned on the field and did not find in most data courses. 
Without going into much details, role-level security is a method used to restrict access to specific rows or records in a database or dataset. By prioritizing data privacy and protection, you will stood out as a data analyst, and again, this is something that can easily impress your manager or other people in your team. Next habit is taking breaks. Working with data for extended periods of time can be mentally taxing. And so successful data analysts take breaks regularly to maintain their focus, avoid mistakes, and actually improve the efficiency of your work. People use the Pomodoro technique, uh, which is a time management method, which basically uses a timer to break down work into intervals. And traditionally, it's uh, 25 minutes in length, separated by short breaks. These intervals are known as pomodoros, the plural in English of the Italian word pomodoro, which means tomato. And I will probably test this technique in the next days, but I feel like I will increase the time of each pomodoro to something like 40 minutes, because I feel like 25 minutes is too short. Next habit is build an internal network. Many times as a data analyst, you will have problems to solve while you actually don't have any idea where to start. For example, it can happen that you have to work on a data set where you have no idea about the meaning of all the columns, and now there are two options here. Either you panic and shut down your laptop pretending you don't exist anymore, or you reach out to someone else who can help. Now the best part is when you know already someone in your company who might be familiar with what you need to do. And this is where if you manage to build your network in your company, you will save a ton of time to complete your work. Obviously your manager will support you here if you are stuck. But what I suggest here is to take advantage of the onboarding time when you join a new company, but also when you are six months or one year in, to schedule meetings with people from other teams and ask them what they do. And then you can start creating a file with a list of people and their expertise. And trust me, this file will become very useful in those difficult times. Next habit is organizing your workflow. A successful data analyst has a habit of organizing their workflow in a way that is effective and efficient. This includes creating a plan, setting priorities, and breaking down larger projects into smaller, more manageable tasks. This is so important because a lot of times it happened to me to receive a task and jumping into it without really thinking in advance about the bigger picture. And the result of not planning in advance is so frustrating because maybe you spend one hour to write some Python code to transform a dataset into a specific format that you want. And then when you're done, you look back at the initial task you had to accomplish and actually what you've done so far is not useful at all. And this happens when there is a lack of planning. And so here my tip for you is to visualize or again write something down to break down the task into smaller, more manageable tasks. And more importantly, picture the output of each task. This is helping me, for example, so much when I need to join multiple tables and transform them, because sometimes it's just easier to write down the skeleton of your SQL query with a high level idea of uh, what you're doing. And then when the plan is done, you just have to translate it into a SQL code, which will become much easier. Next habit is asking questions. A successful data analyst has the habit of asking questions, and this helps them to gain a deeper understanding of the data and the problem they are trying to solve. You have to think of a successful data analyst not as a person that can get all the answers from the data and work alone to make sense of data, but more as a person that is super curious and really get the context and nuances of the problem that he or she is trying to solve. Because you can be a Python master, but if the result of your code is not really used by other people, then it will just sit there, maybe beautiful but useless. And so here comes the skill to be brave enough to ask questions around, using your networks as we said before, and without any fear of feeling like your question might be stupid. Ask around and you will see that some of the replies you get might really give you the true understanding of what you're doing and your purpose, and will help you to get even more motivated to do what you're doing as a data analyst. And there you go, guys. These are the key habits that will make you distinguish yourself among the other ton of data analysts out there. Let me know in the comment section down below if there are any other habits that you would add to this list. And if this video was useful, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to my channel. You know that this massively helped me reaching out to even more people. And I will leave here in the screen some other videos that you might want to check out. And well, enjoy the rest of your day. Ciao for now and see you in the next one.